Hi everyone, welcome back after the break. We are here at day two at the API Days Live Singapore. This is Dheeraj Nayar, your host and MC for the remaining session at the technical stage. I now have Satish Kumar Thiagrajan from the EPEP system, and he will be sharing our very key insights around the topic application security in the API era. And I think it will be really relevant because security has definitely gone more into the central stages. So please feel free to drop your questions on the stage channel. And after the end of the session, Satish will be able to take those questions as well. So over to you, Satish. Thanks, Adhiraj. Uh, hope everyone is able to see my screen. Um, we'll get started. OK. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, today, we are going to talk about application security in API era. This topic is kind of uh, closer to me. I keep talking about this for quite some time. But uh, in, a, in a stage, I'm going to talk about this topic. This is kind of slightly deviating topic, uh, as many people doesn't consider API as an important factor. But uh, I'm really honored that I'm, I'm talking about this in API days conference. So that's thanks. Um, Myself, Satish Kumar Kyagarajan. Uh, I, uh, I am a software practitioner for the last uh, 16 years. Uh, I am uh, part of this meetup groups and all those stuff. I, I believe in sharing knowledge uh, is a way of gaining knowledge. Uh, so that uh, these are all the groups that you see. Uh, Bangalore Java uh, Java user group, or Elasticsearch Chennai, Singapore CSS, uh, Singapore JS. These are all the places that you can find me. Now getting into the topic. Uh, before we get into the before we address the problem and how we uh, change ourselves to address the problem let us understand what we are talking about uh, so things are changing this is what everybody says uh, everybody says uh, particularly this sounds uh, even bigger in technological world and because in technology world things are changing very very fast uh, so there are three things that uh, that i think notable uh, in fact some of our friends who talked about this yesterday uh, they clearly mentioned about each one of this point being bigger is no more an advantage if you if if you are in a company uh, or if you are an uh, if you are in a technologist also if you think you uh, you know uh, things uh, a lot, you know you you are really good at your things you are big in your things it is not going to matter now because it's all about uh, uh, being smart and being fast uh, moving adapting change is going to be the key and technology is with its user in it, in, it is one ask, uh, it, in fact this aspect is what i really liked about technology because if you look at our software industry as such it has come across three phases uh, phase number one, you need real big names uh, to invest in a company and then make a company, which means the software was with companies, bigger companies. And then all open source and all those stuff started. Uh, people can start innovating. And then uh, came uh, this kind of uh, startup kind of companies. That was a second stage uh, where even small people, small companies, uh, they can contribute. Even a normal developer uh, can make things work. That was the second stage. In fact, we are riding the third stage where you no longer need a developer or a company. Even a normal user can go and then do something that he wants. Uh, this might sound sometimes stupid for some people, but what I have realized is one of my friend who is a music composer, he wanted to open an online shop. Uh, he came to me. I personally worked in retail industry for quite some time. Uh, retail finance, education, uh, uh, travel, these are the industries that I have worked. I told him that, OK, this is going to be a complex software. You need four software developers and all those stuff. Later, we came across this uh, Shopify. I just referred that, OK, try this. And I logged in and then helped him to do uh, certain stuff. And now the site is live. And the site was made by a music composer. And that shows the kind of world that we are living in. Because as a customer, if he can make things that he wants, uh, one, first of all, it is going to be highly customized. Two, he knows what he wants. So that is the uh, that is the advantage. Software is going slowly uh, towards its users, so that users can make things that they want to make. Uh, last but not the least, we like it or not, we are connected, and we need to be prepared for it. We can't be isolated anymore. That's the thing. So all these things that we change, I think there are three superheroes that are behind this uh, this change. Uh, one is web. Uh, I consider web as a programming language. Web is not just an uh, internet or something like that. Web is a programming language. You have functions in Java. You have APIs in web. Uh, you have data in Java. You have uh, JSON schema or GraphQL, whatever it is, where we define schemas. So anything that you see, uh, see in a programming language, you can see web itself as a programming language. If you see with that mindset, that opens up quite a bit of a possibilities. And the third most important thing that is close to me is open source. Uh, this open source can be like open ideas, open source code or open APIs, open standards, whatever it is. So things are becoming open. So it, it paves a way for uh, people to innovate. Uh, that's the uh, main advantage that I see 
that we are going through. So things are changing. And now coming to the software, we made softwares for uh, before uh, before ten years before we made softwares. But the softwares are no longer family affairs. And it's a family affairs. Consider you are a bank and you are making an internet banking application. Your internet banking is used by your users. You and your users are your family, and you trust your users. Anyone who's not your family, that is not your user, you are not going to let let him in inside your house, right? That is how the software is built. But nowadays, softwares are no longer just uh, isolated pieces. They are becoming more of more of a socialized uh, people where they make friends, they invite guests. For example, consider fintech technologies. For, if you are a bank. you have a say for example loan division loan division can automatically deduct emi from your banking that is your core banking so that is your friend who stays with you and you know him you know him very well that is your friend and they can invite guest for example wallet systems they can come and then take money from you they can give money to you so you invite guest so we are living in a world where softwares are kind of in a in a in a way that they are highly socialized and that expects a change now from a technologist or from a company the words that you see i i i am sure i missed out some certain other exciting technologies where we all dream to go uh, but uh, this much of the space only that i had uh, but everyone wants to change now if you go and ask whether it is an organization or an individual who wants change almost everybody wants to change and then the second question if you ask who wants to change probably uh, it's not more attractive people don't like that question and then who wants to leave the change uh, that place is probably not the place if you don't want to get hurt uh, uh, that nobody is willing to do but then the change is inevitable that you need to change but you can make plans to change it that is the idea particularly this change uh, why the newer companies are coming very fast is because uh, they start from scratch they don't need to change because change is a difficult process and if you want to change uh, it 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 goes through well planned and structured activities and the big enterprises are struggling because there is no big bang uh, switch from one area to another one in, in any one of this and similarly uh, you can't go in one day that's uh, that's not the idea now here here is the transformation of a change if you want to put a change uh, you need to go through these three uh, things people process and technology uh, in fact technology everybody knows that uh, technology is changing and we are ready to change but people and process if you don't change that probably we are not that that is the idea okay i took this uh, uh, from one of our friends slide yesterday uh, we started our software something like this where we had a big team of uh, software engineers we were co uh, uh, we were uh, coordinating between them and then that's how we were making softwares but it is no longer there uh, if you look at modern software development we work in boxes so each box has a manager each box has a developer each box has a support engineer uh, you have your own ux designers you have your own qa engineers so these all combined one box so this is what we call either a micro service or a devops where we are making teams distributed and self organized that is how we make teams uh, looks really good that's uh, that's correct but let us see the uh, the side effects later now other aspect that i see when i came into the industry there was a clear layer there was a database guy uh, there was a ejb person Uh, there are jsp people and there are ui guys now if i am a ui person i am i am responsible to bring a feature to the end customer but i need to wait until jsp person completes his work and he needs to wait until the ejb person completes work he needs to wait until the database person comes to wait uh, uh, um, completes his work so this is kind of a uh, uh, wait game and that was really really uh, making me frustrated because one side my customer is waiting in the queue to get new features and that comes the new kind of uh, wave in uh, in our development thing we are bringing full stack into the picture where if you see a full stack developer he will he can do everything uh, he can just give features to the customers directly he can just vouch for all the features he gives the feature directly and it's it's all going good and uh, be, uh, i mean without mentioning that actually so of course we are using microservices consider we are using microservices where we have our friends consider each service is a friend Uh, so they all make together and then they they deliver features and outside world communicate to this microservices environment everything goes good now there are breaches that happens consider one your system is there in life for quite some time but all of a sudden when you come into a system and you see that all your indexed data is lost from your uh, 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 search uh, search engine and the uh, the bad part is you have no clue what happened and then you see a behavior where if you are a travel uh, there's a travel site and then uh, you have a clear segregation between an user and an agent an agent can perform a privileged uh, privileged booking 
okay but you see that a user can come and then he can he, he can just loot the identity of an agent he can perform as if he is an agent and he just breaches booking privileges and you have an application that is started showing reports that results in poor decision making we suspect okay there is some uh, some uh, some breach that has happened we just keep checking okay what happened we are looking at our enemies or uh, we are looking at who is a po uh, potential attacker who attacked it and all those stuff but then it is not the attacker if you look at that if you investigate that uh, further this is what we understand sometimes this is something that i really really like uh, this is uh, from a james bond movie uh, sometimes we are so focused on our enemies that is attackers but we forget to watch our friends that is our microservices so what happened in that case is we were protecting us from the outside world but we had our inter service communication and since it is our friend we trust our friends so we just uh, let him in but unintentionally one of our friend deleted that because he had a privilege and now the second culprit for the second two problems is because the guy who was writing it he was basically a ui developer and then he came into the full stack development he feels he is he is more empowered now so what he was doing there is he was signing for the authorities for example if you consider an application that checks whether you are an user or an agent in your client side and then if it is true it just sends a request to the server you are gone because you are breaching the security you are just saying you are uh, you are just vouching for the transactions but the thing is it's as good as these kind of security ultimately if you are going in an api world api is the gateway api is the gateway for your monitoring api is the gateway for your security api is the great way for your tracking or whatever use cases that you want to do yes it is nice to have ui validations it's nice but then it doesn't give you an excuse to say that okay i'm done the problem with this is you almost don't see that in your apps because if you are just testing your apps you will definitely miss it out breach is just a breach whether it's internal or external or whether it is uh, it is done accidentally or it is an incident it doesn't matter breach is a breach so we need to be careful about a breach the fundamental problem that i think happening is we all see a breach <coughs> as a technological problem but there is an hidden aspect to it we should start seeing this as a technological problem because uh, whenever you are going into a technology there is a logical uh, things to it we need to consider what we are going ahead and what kind of safety measures that we need to do now uh, we are, uh, there are a lot of questions about uh, how do we go to microservice from monolithic what is the tool that will help me to do, do that let us be honest okay there is no magic silver bullet that is going to tell you that okay put this you are going to be from microservice to monolith or you are going to be api for start organization you are going to be design system no you need to prepare for the change and prepare is the main aspect that makes a huge difference between you and your competitor now what we need to do is we are just going to make a first change we are just going to open that box we are going to have an out of the box thinking what is that out of the box thinking if you look at the previous diagram that i put in the closed box we had developers we had support engineers we had our management it's all fine but then if you look at the ux and qa they test your software right if you just keep them outside without knowing your complexities how you structure it you can always have an outside perspective by keeping these two people inside a box which means if they are also going to be there uh the problem is sometimes you you can't see the holistic purpose because at the end of the day your service is not going to work alone the api is collection of services when you see it from outside world only you will be saying okay this api is already there probably you are duplicating the api probably this is the place where you are deviating the security uh, authorization from a uh, sub component these kind of things you can see only when you put these people out of the box and that is one thing that will be very very useful now in security uh, this is the this is a, a very common feature uh, how you secure a system is the lesser that you say uh, lesser that you expose it's always better so in that aspect we are going to see a number of items that i think it is useful uh, probably we can we can have something else also i inv invite people to put your suggestions so reduce number of aps we have the culture where teams are really really happy about okay we made 20 aps we made 20, 30 aps no it's not about number of aps that you make it make it make it a good ap it's it's all about Uh, the meaning of the api that makes it good then document apis the document api which was covered yesterday by somebody uh, even if it is agile agile uh, doesn't promote that agile doesn't in documentations and then keep create as consumer separate that is very important factor if you are an api consumer uh, uh, do not do not consume your own api that's always a good practice uh, service resources are internal Uh, do not expose the databases uh, to outside world directly if you want to expose your data expose the data to a service that's always a better practice expose only friendly api to friends and uh, that's an important aspect 
uh, you are the owner of your client uh, okay that's very important because uh, in a microservices world what we do is uh, we expect okay we have exposed the rest restful apis uh, whoever needs it please create your own client and then use it do not do that the reason being if more people makes client later at client level if you want to put any put any security checks you already lost your control you can't gain that control again so that's one thing that you need to think uh, when you uh, make claims uh, the last three are kind of uh, kind of optional if you really want to uh, go overboard uh, then what you can do is you can create your own client uh, uh, for custom resources for example if you are using elastic search you can make a client elastic search understand rest so you can make a client that will perform only what you want to do do not expose direct elastic search rest apis uh, to other people that's one thing and boundary checks Uh, boundary checks is uh, multiple levels uh, one is using uh, usage of type safe languages like if you are in a, in a web you can use typescript uh, they 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 predict they they understand your errors little earlier and then static analysis tools and rqunit is highly underrated tool that is what i feel rqunit if you are coming from a java background rqunit can go an extra mile to check is there any loophole in your code uh, uh, specific to your own functionality that is the thing and finally auto generate a code that's also a very good uh, uh, aspect auto uh, the code generation is a relatively bigger topic it has multiple levels also but if you have the habit of generating code it will be really good that's the idea so now coming to the lessons that uh, i learned uh, from some of the masters in this industry uh, so i i i just put the uh, two items that i'm really really impressed uh, one of uh, uh, the security veteran uh, in banking he told uh, this uh, we safeguard almost everything but for an attacker just keep in mind he, all that he needs is just one being clicked Uh, the previous topics that i told it is not just one weak link probably we are we are we are uh, we are opening up quite a bit of a weak link so we need to be very very cautious about that and then we do not make softwares that doesn't fail let's keep it straight it's not like you are going to make a perfect software the reason being we are chasing our target itself like moving so we are writing for the requirement the requirement itself keep changing so you never ever be able to write a perfect software even if you are a perfect programmer but all that we need to care about is whether we have the measures to how quickly that we can recover that is going to be the differentiating factors that is the place your cicd engineering practices safety checks code review practices uh, cloud deployment all these things are coming together to make sure that you can quickly deploy your system quickly recover from your mistakes that's the thing so this is uh, uh, this is all about the security that uh, i would like to share for the day i uh, hope uh, audience find it useful thanks a lot for the opportunity thanks for the team uh, uh, arranging this uh, during this, uh, uh, difficult situations questions please thanks satish for a wonderful session so mm -hmm. with respect to the uh, questions we haven't got any questions from the audiences as such but uh, with respect to the, your track so one of the things you mentioned about the documentation uh, of the apis and also when we are working with respect to the microservices so in uh, in terms of that if you can elaborate how important it is specifically when you are at the start of your journey because many of the com companies are just at the initial stages with respect mm -hmm. to their apis adoption so any tips or any inputs you have uh, in order to make it uh, more like a best practices which they can adopt uh, thanks uh, lad direct that was a wonderful question actually um, because i think that is the place where many of the problem happens uh, if you have a perfect start probably 50% of your 50% of your journey is going to be successful now when you say uh, when if you are if you are transitioning to see for example microservices or uh, what are new technologies two things that keep in mind do not do it like in one stretch rather you identify some of the things that are not business business wise critical take them out put it in a in a separate place and even if you fail it doesn't make matter a lot polish your process polish your ca cd uh, code reviews agile practices team skill set improvement what are new technology uh, new technology uh, in entropy new technology try it out and then do it that's one thing and the second important aspect I, it, it's kind of controversial but then uh, let us be honest monolithic is not dead even there are cases that people go to microservice and come back to monolith in a specific use case so keep it as a mono repo even if it is a service make modular monolithics so it will be like a monolithic application but it will be like functionally se segregated like if you are using maven if you are using uh, npm make it as a modular project and then as you mature and you think that this piece needs a separate ground to grow 
take that piece alone put it somewhere else as a micro service so this i think two important factors that you need to consider if you are starting your journey but remember if you if you want to correct it you can correct it only when you start later it will be very very difficult right yeah absolutely and can't agree more on you is with respect to specifically for the companies who are at the initial stages if you are making sure these are the important aspects that that are being taken care of certainly helps in a long run as well and the second question which i have is since you also mentioned about the people process technology perspective so from your own experiences uh, what was a bigger challenge whether it was more towards the cultural side or whether it was more about the technical aspects in choosing the right tools or it was a balance of both from your own perspective uh, okay uh, in fact that is uh, that's a interesting topic uh, i see that as we go along uh, one of the best manager that you can have is technology uh, technology itself has aspects of becoming a good manager if you see technology as a manager and then manage people right i think that will solve most of the problem but at present what happens is if you have a technology and you need to make sure people understand the technologies and as we live in a world where technology comes day in and day out and these terms are very very new particularly consider things like design system and all those stuff it's hard to explain it to people and i think that is a problem uh, explaining it to people make people understand and then adhere to the technology you lose quite a bit of a time there right absolutely and thanks for answering that sadish mm-hmm. because i think yeah. it, it is really relevant for our audiences to understand these things because sometimes you are a bit confused especially when you are starting your journey so i think mm-hmm. that kind of insights along with your experiences definitely helps yeah. uh, and the last question before we end uh, the session is around the skills so when we talk about the application security per se what mm-hmm. are the key skills you think should be there as part of the uh, core technical skills which becomes highly relevant in mm-hmm. making sure that the apis are secure enough and also mm-hmm. are uh, more or less align with the overall transformation which you are doing it internally okay so security has multiple levels as we know there are seven layers of security uh, so okay. your cloud has to be secured uh, uh, in fact uh, this is a very interesting point if you attend the last uh, google meet uh, in uh, singapore they mentioned this the security that we guarantee is our infrastructure is secure but it's up to you to secure your data because if your apis are having a loopholes then anybody can get into the system and then corrupt your system that's the thing so now coming specific to the api security api security is evolving field uh, you can't say how many number of attacks that we have with new technologies that is coming in in that case one area that i really feel will be very very useful is uh, this iem uh, identity access iem i think identity access managers so if you are a new company and you want to get into the world and you don't want to think a lot about security because it's a complex field you don't have the resources probably initial stages you can get help from this iam kind of uh, key clock octa arc zero i think these kind of services if you can get help from those people uh, they will take care of majority of your security at the end of the day once the call is coming to you you need to worry about your authorization so so passport or screen security that comes after that so what i see as a core skill set is iam uh, is a very very good skill set to have in the modern technologies uh, and then uh, spring security or passport the specific framework specific stuff will be very very handy right absolutely and i think uh, like you mentioned it's an evolving space and mm-hmm. certainly if the application security becomes the central point which definitely is much needed and required specifically mm-hmm. with so much of attacks and cyber attacks and the ethical or the unethical hacking which is happening but sure enough with this evolving space with the right mindset with the right technical capabilities i think we can make it as secure as possible uh, i i maybe I, we can have one more point to that uh, logging and security cannot be actually uh, cannot be separated out probably one thing that you can think is uh, you can think of uh, logging not just for your services at least till you transition well you can think of logging in your front end also Uh, i'm not sure about the names but there are technologies like log racket or something uh, they can help you to log your even your uh, browser uh, level activities this logging is not just going to be useful for security uh, by the way this logging is going to be key for personalization also so the more that you log more useful information you log you can give a better service to your user you can understand your user and you can secure your user awesome definitely so with that note thank you so much satish for joining us and also sharing your key insights along with your experiences and uh, uh, really appreciate all your 
time as well as efforts and uh, thank you so much and 